Hello everyone and welcome to the World Series of Board Gaming's How to Win series, this time with a twist. We asked our 2023 champion to spill all of his secrets. 2023 champion of Seven Wonders, Scott Kushner, he came in third in the overall competition, bringing home $5,000. And so we had a great little interview with him. And because Seven Wonders has been rotated out of the competition, we figured it would be a good opportunity for Scott to tell you all about his strategy tips so that you can elevate your game to the next level. Here at the WSPG, we're all about building up our players, elevating board gaming to the next level, and putting some of the greatest players out there onto the world stage. And if you think that you're a good board gamer and you want to take home one of our coveted WSBG championship rings right there in all of its $3,000 diamond encrusted glory and the fame and glory that comes with it, well, you still have a chance to sign up for WSBG 2024. It's happening in Vegas, September 22nd to the 26th. And we've extended our promotion. You can save $50 off on a stay and play. So check it out. You could win your share of $100,000 in cash and prizes just for playing board games. The World Series of Board Gaming is back and bigger than ever. High-level play, friendly competition, national championships, there's no other event of its kind. Are you the next big name in board gaming? Get your tickets now at WSBGVegas.com and use the code IMN to save yourself up to 50 bucks. What are you waiting for? It's time to get in the game. If you book before April 8th, this is the final extension. We extended it because it was Easter weekend and we wanted to give everybody a nice chance to get this deal. We have extended it now. This is your chance to save money and get into the tournament at a lower cost. And who knows? Maybe you can be celebrated as one of the top board gamers of all time. Don't take my word for it. Let's turn it over to Scott and hear all about his tips on how to succeed in Seven Wonders and... He talks a little bit more about his experience progressing through the tournament as well. My name is Scott Kushner. I live in Hackettstown, New Jersey, about an hour west of New York City. And I won the Seven Wonders Ring at World Series of Board Gaming 2023. So a couple of strategies I employed uh, that, that helped me win the games at World Series of Board Gaming. Um, for, for Seven Wonders, which was my ring game that I won, I had a couple of things that I, I used. And I don't mind sharing these in a little bit more depth because Seven Wonders is not back on the docket for next year's World Series of Board Gaming. So all the secrets can come out now. So one of the things was, uh, because we played with the leader expansion, it was really important as much as I could uh, to try and have some synergy with the leaders and with my board. So I got very fortunate in that I had drawn the Giza uh, Pyramid board, which is very resource heavy and provides a lot of points for uh, for completing your wonders. And then the leaders that I ended up choosing uh, were they gave me money right away, which kind of gave me some flexibility right at the start. I had the, the leader that allows you to build a a part of your wonder with one fewer resource. So that was a very big help because it's so resource heavy. You're going to need so many resources, but now it just eased the burden for the whole game. And the last one gave me two additional victory points for each completed part of my wonder. So I had flexibility up front. I had cheaper uh, completion of my wonders. And then I had extra bonus points for my wonders. Now this is in the ring game. Obviously I had to, I had to use a different strategy in the, in the previous rounds, but the idea was to try and set up some synergy there. And then also the order in which I revealed those leaders, I wanted to have a lot of resources and flexibility up front, and then hopefully some big, um, you know, power or, or point getting later on and kind of keep those secret as much as I could, because what I don't want to do is I didn't want to tip my hand on a strategy early on. Uh, some of the people that I played against, their very first card that they would play would indicate they're going to go strong military. And so that's that's fine. And maybe there's not much I can do to stop them. But a game like Seven Wonders is largely about building your own, but keeping an eye on what the other people need and then hate drafting, taking away what they need, whether tucking in as part of your own wonder, uh, discarding for three coins, which is not a very efficient use, but that's that's kind of what you can do there. Um, and so I didn't want to tip my hand, as it were, into which direction I was going to go until everybody was kind of set in their own direction and they couldn't do as much to stop me, if that makes sense. As far as the hate drafting goes, the other part that I 
you know, I think it's very easy to get focused on that and seeing what the other people want and then trying to deny them those cards. But I, you, it's, it's important that you remember that one of your fellow opponents is also trying to hate draft for your opponent. So in a three person game, it's not just me who's trying to deny, uh, you know, player one, player three is also trying to deny player one. So I tried to really lean on my opponent on one side to deny the opponent on the other side. So Mm -hmm. an example is if player one passes me their cards and I know they're going strong science and they pass me some cards that have science, I could say, Hey, I don't want that science card to get back around to them. So I'm going to, I'm going to tuck, or I could take the card that benefits me the most, be a little selfish, pass them to the player next to me and say, you go ahead and deny them that science card and kind of make them do my dirty work for me while still benefiting me with the cards that I draw. doesn't work every time, but there were certainly opportunities where I could have done kind of the, the, uh, the dirty work of denying a card. And instead I thought, you know what, this card gives me a lot more benefit and I'll hope that the other person sees that they need to deny it. And it, you know, they kind of do it, my work for me. So that was very helpful. Also a, a big thing that was an adjustment in getting into the ring games uh, for world series of board gaming is first place moves you on. Second place is no different than third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It doesn't matter. So first place or nothing. Um, and so it's less of a benefit to beat somebody. You need to, be, you need to be the winner as opposed to not the loser, if that makes sense. So uh, it doesn't matter that I am getting over on one of my opponents. I need to be able to beat both of them. And mm-hmm. so in, in doing so, my score has to be good. It's not that their score just has to be, you know, one person's score has to be bad. So it's it's a slight shift in how you're looking at it, but it's not enough. It's not enough to to get over on an opponent and then hope you beat the other person. You need to you need to make sure that you're beating both of them. And so by letting them do the dirty work, you you might actually be be getting it over on both of them because if that person denies them the card that they need, you know, if player one needs a certain card and player three denies them that, not only is player one hurt, but player three might be hurt as well because they had to spend their turn doing something that I wanted and not necessarily what they wanted. So that, that worked out. So that's, that was specific to seven wonders, but I yeah. think maybe as, as big of a strategy or mindset that I had to go into was to remain calm. Like this was, is an enduring uh, competition, especially as you go, go in. And this is my first time being at world series of board gaming. It was a lot of fun. People were very friendly, but it's intense, especially when you're in those ring games and especially as you move up in levels. And so maintaining kind of a a clear mind is very difficult, especially when you've been doing this all day long or, uh, you know, you're sleep deprived or, you know, you just, your brain's been calculating and and contemplating different strategies like nonstop. So it can be really exhausting mentally uh, and physically. And so, you know, not rushing on your move, not panicking, uh, you know, they give you a a good amount of time to make your move. And I think leading into the the ring game for Seven Wonders, I noticed that I was getting a little like antsy. I was, you know, I was having trouble just kind of sitting still and I was a lot of nervous energy and we had about half an hour to go until the game. And I, my buddy that I traveled with, we found Clask which had been set up on one of the tables out in the in the main lobby. And it's, you know, a fun, we had never played it before, but it's just a fun kind of like air hockey with magnets kind of thing. And we played that for 20 minutes and it was such a delightful release that I, I just felt my tension just drop significantly. And, you know, that, that was, I didn't plan on that, but it worked perfectly. Um, and it really just put me in a good mental state going into that final. And I could see, that, you know, it's very easy to get tense in those situations. And I think, it, you know, to sum it all up, I don't think I'm the best Seven Wonders player in the world. Like, I think there's there's plenty of evidence to prove that I'm not. As soon as we were done and we came back a couple of weeks later, I had a game night with my buddies. And the first game we played was Seven Wonders with the leader expansion. And I got dead last. Um, <laughs> but... They they were all ganging it up on me. Let's, let's be clear. And then they also asked for the ring after that. Um, but um, no, it, it was it was that I I think I played nearly flawlessly during that tournament. I there was a lot of luck involved with the card draw, 
and and just have being the options that were available to me. But my mind was in a, a clear place where I was making sound decisions and I wasn't panicking and I was able to take in what I wanted, but also recognizing what my opponents needed. And uh, and so I don't know that there were many moves that I made over the course of that tournament where I was like, oh, I should have done this, which is something that I typically do because I'm usually more impatient when I play. I just want to like kind of get the game flowing. And this time, taking your time and being in a clear mind state will really help good uh, decision making. I So I registered for um, Azul, Seven Wonders, Castles of Burgundy, and Wingspan. And truth be told, I thought the only chance I really had of winning a ring was Wingspan. Wing, Wingspan is a game where I know that I can beat anybody but it's also a game where, you know, luck is a, a greater variant in Wingspan. Uh, card draw, bonus cards, you know, like you can get set up very well. You can get set up very poorly. And no matter how well you play, you're going to lose. So luck is, is a bigger variable there. But I know that given the chance to beat someone in Wingspan, I can probably do it as long as they don't have a ton of luck on their side and get all the right card draws. But Seven Wonders was one of those games where I thought, okay, I, I, I didn't register for any game. I didn't think I had a fighter's chance in. So seven wonders, I thought was a good game for me, but I, you know, I would kind of, there are a couple of, uh, of wonders that I don't really like, and I don't do very well. And if we got stuck with one of those, mm, I, I would have felt a little dicey. Um, I did have to play with one of the wonders that was from the leader expansion. And I didn't have as much experience with that. So I did have to train up on the leader expansion a little bit. Uh, funny story on that is so I had I had very limited experience with that leader expansion. And the day of the uh, the start of the Seven Wonders tournament, I'm playing with the expansion with a couple of people and like standing over my shoulder is some guy, some big tall guy just staring at our table. And he's like, I would like to play. And he had a, a, a thick European accent and come to figure it out. It's Matthias Vige, uh, designer of Arc Nova. And this is the first time I'd ever met him. And we start chatting and he's a really friendly guy and and obviously a very good uh, board. He's not just a game designer. He also plays and he's very strategic. And so he and I trained for Seven Wonders leaders and we cranked out like two games really, really fast right before the start of the tournament. And uh, it was great to like, get to meet him but also to see how he he thought and like how he was kind of evaluating the game. Cause I think he was in a similar state to me. Like he wasn't as familiar with the leader expansion going in and sure enough, we ended up meeting in the finals. So uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, a little bit kismet there, but uh, it, it was, it was really cool to get, get to meet him, but then also to utilize that time um, to get better at the game and to, to train up right before as well. He, he, he's awesome. So, yeah. um, so after that, after that little friendship that, you know, we created, I mean, I'm probably overstating it as a friendship, but he's, he's very good at making you, you know, like he's very personable, even though I was a total stranger, like he would talk to me, we were, you know, I was able to ask him questions. I didn't seem like he didn't take it as I was annoying him at all or anything like that. Um, we were talking games. He just, he really just was kind of in his element and it made everybody around him feel very good. Um, but now we've trained together. We've played a few times together. We meet in the finals together. He's, you know, racking his brain about how he could have beat me in the finals and, oh, I should have done this and that. And so it, we, we bonded a little bit there. And later that night is, or I guess uh, a couple of nights later is when we actually found out what the semifinal games would be. And the semifinal game I got was Dune Imperium. Again, a game that I, I actually purchased in anticipation of World Series of Board Gaming because I had never played it before. So I, I bought it. I had played it. But it was, I wasn't a, a really re – I hadn't played it in quite some time. So I needed to train up on that, and I pulled an all-nighter before the semifinals. Matthias stayed up with us till 3 in the morning playing Dune Imperium. So he basically sat there and helped train me for Dune Imperium as well. He slaughtered us in Dune Imperium. I mean, absolutely obliterated everybody. But in doing so, he kind of opened my eyes to an alternate strategy that I had never considered. And I think that was actually really helpful. And not only that, but it just kind of shows the the kindness and the warmth of, of that. He didn't have to he didn't have to stay up at all, much less till three in the morning and deprive him, himself of sleep. Um, but he did that. And it, it 
it was awesome. And I've actually emailed him since and he's responded. So it's just, it was one of those like kind of personal connections that I'll remember outside of the games, outside of, of, you know, winning anything that was, that was really cool. All right. What, so what advice would I give to somebody who's considering world series of board gaming uh, attending? Well, I'll, I'll put it this way. So it's, it's December right now. December a year ago, I had never heard of World Series of Board Gaming. I did not know it existed as an entity, much less something that I would want to attend. Uh, I don't think it was till February-ish or so that a friend of mine sent it to me kind of on a lark. Like, hey, did you know they even do this? And and I didn't make a decision that I was going to attend in probably a month or two after that. And, um, you know, it was, it was definitely out of the ordinary. It was a, very, it was a treat to myself uh, going out to las vegas from new jersey um going out with a friend but it was something that i really really wanted to do and it was mostly just you know when i'm when i'm home i don't have the time typically to play as many games as i want um it's hard to find opponents you know all my friends are dads like me you know we have a busy work schedule family schedule it's it's hard to ever just kind of be solely focused on on gaming and and so it was it was going to be a treat and a great experience and we were just i was just really eager to do that of course the incentive of actually like possibly winning a ring possibly winning money uh, i in my mind i didn't want to make that as a standard because i didn't know what i was walking into i you know i'm just a middle-aged father who likes to play board games with his buddies from time to time and i force my family to play with me too when they you know when they allow me to uh I didn't really, I didn't know how likely it was that I would even have a, a, a puncher's chance of winning something. And to to go, what I would say is, honestly, the ring competitions and winning all that stuff, it was fun. I, I thought it was, I got my money's worth before I even won anything. Because within five minutes of attending, uh, it, the door is kind of open and I'm poking my head around and people are kind of pouring in. And within five minutes, I'm in a, uh, a room being taught an unreleased overseas game from Tom Vassell. And I, I'm learning from Tom Vassell and I'm playing against Roy Canada in a game that nobody's ever seen in the United States. I'm like, you know, five minutes in, I'm like, this is worth the price of admission right now. I'm like, this, is, this is it. This is great. And of course, as the week went on, um, I got to meet Matthias. I got to, uh, you know, Tom taught us more games. I met people from, from Massachusetts to Texas to all over the place. I befriended people. It was, it was just a blast nonstop. And winning, of course, was just the icing on the cake. You know, and all of that, had I not won a single thing, it would have been an absolutely wonderful trip and something that I would want to do over and over again and actually bring more people in. You know, I've, I've told my buddies, like, if you can make it, like, let's, let's make this an annual thing. Um, it, it was fantastic. So um, you don't have to feel like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta be in it. If I don't get the ring, it's not going to be a worthwhile trip. Or if I don't get a paycheck at the end, it's not a worthwhile trip. It was a, an absolutely wonderful experience regardless of all that stuff. And then this just made it surreal. You know, the, the, the victories just made it like, I can't even, you know, one of, it went from being a wonderful um, vacation to one of those kind of seminal moments in your life where you're like, I can't believe that happened. Um, and I do want to go back and I expect that I'll be back. And I don't know that I'm going to win a thing, but uh, you know, I don't, I don't need to, to enjoy it. My wife was a rock star with the kids, um, you know, and I think she understands how how kind of magical the experience was uh, for me. So you know, I had coworkers, family, all kinds of people like tracking as as the tournament went on. So it was it was pretty cool. So there you have it. Thanks again to Scott. That was an older interview. As you can see, we were going through all of the games in this series. We finally have gotten around to Seven Wonders. If you missed Scott's winning match, you can check him out over on the Dice Tower. I'll link down below. Commented on by myself and Ashton Wu of Shelfside. It was a pretty fun game. Quick, speedy, three-player game of Seven Wonders, which is probably my favorite player count to play Seven Wonders at. So go check that out. If you want more Seven Wonders content, who knows, if you really want more Seven Wonders content, maybe I'll give you, you know, five tips that I've picked up from watching players play as well. But that'll come in a different video. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Chris George. And on behalf of all of us here at WSBG, what are you waiting for? It's time to get in the game.